Hello, this is Tofu Trifle Productions with another Blender quick tip. And in this quick tip, I'm going to show you how you can easily create uh, fluid simulations in Blender by using the Fluid Lab add-on. It's not all that you have to pay for, and to be upfront with you, it's a little bit on the pricey side, it's like $60. Um, but uh, for what it can do, uh, the price is a little bit justified. I'm going to leave a link in the below the video so you can check it out yourselves and download it. But once you've downloaded it onto your system, go to Edit, Preferences, Install, navigate to where the zip file is, click on Install Add-on, and type in Fluid, and put a check in the box and it's activated. Now for myself, uh, with any simulation, it always has quite a bit of output, so it's it's better for you to create a folder you can store all the files in I've made one on my external hard drive which is right here so you can just create a path to create to get a cache path after you've made your folder just click on this uh, icon there and open up where you've uh, created your new folder and just click on accept and it's done now this add-on only works for Blender 4.1 only, it doesn't work in any other version of Blender at all, just 4.1 and that's pretty much it. But the reason why I say that the price can be justified is because, inside, I don't know about any other versions of, of uh, any other 3D software, but in Blender, anytime Blender makes any kind of simulation, whether it's smoke, uh, fire, water, it always has to have a bounding box around uh, the simulation. You know, to ca calculate the volume and the mass, the viscosity, and all that kind of stuff of whatever it is that is simulating smoke, fire, or water, which can be limiting because if you have uh, smoke coming up, it'll just stop right out, up there at the bounding box. I mean, it does have presets in here or settings in here that would try to dissolve that, but you can still see it still where, where the uh, smoke stops. Same thing with the water splashes, that's a big issue. When you create a uh, splash inside of a box, when it hits the side of the box, it's going. It's pretty much just going to stick to the side of the box and just kind of slide down. And when the box is invisible, it looks pretty ridiculous. But the cool thing about this add-on, the Fluid Lab add-on, is that there are no bounding boxes at all, which is impressive. Now, once you've activated the add-on, it's right here on the right-hand side of the UI. And it's pretty straightforward to use. It's got a whole lot of settings that you can use to adjust. <clears throat> Excuse me, you can adjust your simulations and uh, have all these interactions with their simulations with other objects in the scene, which is cool. And you can use any mesh you want to use to do the simulations. I'm going to stick with the cube here. So with this cube select, I'm going to click on my move gizmo. Left click on that. Left click and drag on the Z axis to drag it up a little bit. Uh, press one on my keyboard so you can get a frontal view of the simulation and drag it up a little bit more and we're gonna let you don't have to do this but I just do this just to keep track of objects in my scene I'm there I'm gonna rename the cube to water and type in water here enter and then with the cube selected press add new and it's going to have two options for for creating a new group which is geometry and inflow with geometry, it just creates a glob of liquid that will drop down from the cube because gravity is being applied to the simulation. With inflow, it'll be like an outflow of water from the cube. So for the sake of this tutorial, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to stick with inflow and click on OK. And with the cube still selected, I'm going to click on add emitter. And the cube uh, turns invisible, basically, because we don't want to see the cube in the final render. And then when you press play, it gives you a simulation of what the water simulation will look like. Now at this point, this is not a mesh, it's just a simulation. In order to turn it into a mesh, you have to go down to these parameters down here. Um, and there are different types of things you can do with this simulation. You can add forces like wind, vortexes, things like that. Um, turned into a mesh that I said prior the shading which is the uh, the look it has presets for this too in terms of like if you want it to be uh, have a shader shader of water or honey oil whatever it's there uh, fluid presets 
And the fluid presets, let's click on that. Let's see what that does. It gives you the different kind of viscosities of the liquid. It has, when I say viscosity, it means like water flows in a different way from honey. Honey flows in a different way from, I guess, uh, oil. Oil flows in a different way and interacts in a different way from, um, let's say, any other kind of liquid. That's the viscosity of the liquid. And it's got presets here too. It's got honey, oil, sand, and so on and so forth. And as I've said in prior tutorials, <clears throat> excuse me, when uh, you have grayed out areas in Blender, that means you can't edit them. So to turn this into editable content, click on this icon of a pencil. And now I can edit, edit the presets here, which is pretty cool. Uh, colliders, you can have the simulation of the fluid simulate or collide, I guess, with other models or meshes in Blender. Fluid interaction, that's pretty interesting because what this does is that it'll take two different fluids or multiple different fluids in your scene and help them interact with each other, like uh, water and oil. And as you know, in real life or in life, I guess, in this world, water and oil don't mix. So this will simulate that. You got dynamic paint, so on and so forth. Uh, but let's go with um, mesh. Let's turn this to a mesh. But before we do that, let's actually put in, because I want to show you guys how the colliders work. So I'm going to bring in a model of Suzanne, Shift A, mesh. Uh, click on monkey. I'm going to scale that up a little bit, make it a little bit bigger. And I guess we could make her a little bit smoother too. Click on our, uh, this is a wrench uh, icon. Add modifier, go to deform, and is it in deform? Oh, it's, it's in generate, subdivision surface. I just don't like the way they set up 4.1's uh, modifiers at all, but it just is what it is. And let's uh, click on that drop down arrow and click on apply. Left click and choose shade smooth. And now if we click, if we keep uh, Suzanne selected, we click on colliders. It'll give us this uh, pop-up module to work with. And with Suzanne selected, let's click on add selection uh, collider. And now when we press play, you can see that the liquid now flows over Suzanne fairly easily. In Blender, it's a little bit iffy sometimes with the collision modifier. But with this add-on, it makes it just a one-click uh, solution, which is great. Now, um, to turn this into a mesh, the water, uh, let's let's get some uh, simulation going first. And then with our cube selected, let's scroll back up and click on mesh. And with the cube still selected, click on add mesh. Gives us the, uh, the mesh that's available that we have already selected and click on OK. And now it's a mesh. Now you can see that this is an actual physical mesh with the geometry, which is great. Now it looks a little rough, um, but you can scroll down to the settings down here. And the voxel actually increases the, um, the volume of the mesh. If we left click on this, it actually makes it a little bit smoother. That's what it does. And the minimum maximum, this is what makes it more makes the liquid more. Now if you look at the liquid, it looks it's uh, looks a little rough. Let's just be upfront about that. A little bit uh, too rigid. To smooth it out, you press on smooth X, Y, and Z. And this drop down arrow, when you click on that, it gives you the option to smooth on the X axis, or the Y axis, or the Z axis. When the arrow has been turned off, you smooth on all axes, axes at the same time. I'm going to click this up a little bit and it becomes smoother. Now these uh, colors, this is just to represent the simulation, but this won't render out in your final render. And you could be wondering, well, why is there noise, you know, separate meshes and things like that? And why is there a grain option? Because this not only simulates liquid as in water, it simulates sand also. Um, if we scroll up, and we go to, let's see where sand is located. Sometimes it's kind of hidden. Let's click on that and let's see. The sand option is somewhere in here. 
But let's stick with mesh for now. With mesh, you can add motion blur to it also. And if we, if we want to add, um, let's say, uh, shading to it, you have the option here to click on that. And here is where the sand is. This is the sand in terms of like the particles. Fluid is there. And fluid has, uh, let me see, about 10 presets. You have water lights, light or water, blood, chocolate, honey, so on and so forth. But where the particles, this is where the sand option is, where the particles, it's only sand that's there. When you click on fluids, um, to add, after you've chosen which preset you want, we're going to, let's stick with milk. Let's go to milk. Click on set material. And then it turns this option in terms of the uh, liquid itself into milk, the uh, shader. And let's click on Eevee. You can see that it's white, which is what milk is, it's white. And the cool thing about the milk, and I think this is applied to all, the, it's actually applied to all the shaders, it's not just one solid color. It's got translucency in it. It's got um, uh, some sheen to it because that's what milk looks like in reality. And you have all these settings down here. You can change the way the milk looks according to what you want it or how you want it to look. So this add-on is pretty impressive from the standpoint of the fact that it not only simulates liquids, but it simulates sand. It's fast also, but that also depends on your computer system on how strong your graphics card is. Um, the shading presets are, you know, they're not simple, basic shaders they're complex shaders to simulate uh the way these uh, liquids will look in real life or in real time so that's also great and like i said before the most impressive part of that is when it comes to rendering out it does need a, a bounding box and you can also bake you know it's good to bake all your shaders um before you render out just to save time it does help with that but yeah this is the Fluid Lab add-on, like I said, for all your presets for changing the way the your counts, the amount of water, the randomness of the water, the liquid of the sand, it's all here. Uh, when it comes to resolution, oh, it just, I think it's because it's an EV, it kind of, you know, is trying to render that back out. But all your presets are here, and it works great, and it's pretty efficient. And that's today's Blender Quick Tip, the Fluid Lab add-on. You go back. Let's get that simulation going again. Yeah, there we go. I just like the way it looks, just in general. I mean, like I said before, no bounding box, and that's just the to me. That's the that's the best part of this. No bounding boxes at all. So that's just great. And uh, hopefully, uh, those of you who have watched have learned something from it. Uh, thank you guys who have watched. And once again, like and subscribe, and I'll see you guys on the next one. All right, adios.